Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine, and this week we're hearing about a second sunrise in the Rhode Island false albacore bite. We're also hearing that there are big bluefish and slot bass at the east end of the canal. Uh, we're also hearing that the surf casting in Rhode Island has been phenomenal, and you can put a big fat bullseye on the breachways right now. And don't forget, if you live in Connecticut, blackfish season opens on Sunday, October 10th. You might want to order your crabs now. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's Web Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. So let's start things off with the Albi review, which we've been doing for the last few weeks. And you know, it's been kind of a weird season Albi wise. Um, I don't think anybody would disagree with me there. And uh, you know, things are starting to come together pretty good in um, Western Rhode Island uh, for a while there in the middle of September, then they kind of fizzled out. Well, they're back again. And uh, it seems like it actually might be a little bit better than it's been all season down there. So there's good numbers of fish um, along South County. There are fish being caught from shore kayak boat um, you can pretty much you can pretty much think you're gonna find them from like the west wall all the way to watch hill but really the best spot uh, well the best areas between Kwani and watch hill and on those days when you're fishing that area and you don't see much uh, don't be afraid to head over the line and go to the race because I've heard of that a couple times now where the guys were struggling to find them in those uh, in those breachway zones and I, few guys streaked off and went over to the race and they found good fish found good bites a lot of feeds and not a lot of people fishing for them so um, definitely a place to keep an eye on the other place that's been really good pretty that's the only place that has been really consistent is Vineyard Sound still holding up uh, seems like it's slowed down a little bit maybe the sizes aren't quite what they were and uh, the Bonito in that area have really started to, to uh, decrease in size but uh, the bite's still good over that way, and um, that can be confirmed just by checking out the Martha's Vineyard Derby scores. Um, you know, they post stuff almost daily, or actually I think they do post stuff daily. Um, so you can look at the daily and weeklies and see what's going on out that way, and that can give you a pretty good idea of what's going on in that neck of the woods. Uh, the other thing that's happening is we're hearing about Benito in uh, really small Benito, like candy bar size Benito. In Rhode Island, guys are getting them on sabiki rigs and they're kind of having fun with these little bones. But one thing to remember is that more than a few guys now have said that they've found some really nice bonito mixing in with them. I don't know if they're, you know, eating them or if it's a chaperone situation, but um, uh, you know, keep that keep that bigger rod at the ready if you get up on some of these because there's some big schools of these small bones. But um, you know, don't don't forget to uh, prospect for some bigger ones. And the last place that we're hearing about hardtail action is just a few more albies. You know, there, it was that second contingent that kind of went along the North Shore of Long Island. Now they kind of seem like they've looped across. They've gone through the Norwalk Islands. Some of them are hanging out in that area. Some of them are hanging out in Milford, you know, around the Housatonic. Some of them are getting out as far as um, New Haven. And um, so it kind of just seems like there's another sect of them that they're kind of converging on the middle. We have heard about some albies around the Thames River and a few schools here and there around the Connecticut River. So, you know, maybe we're gonna get a convergence here in the next week or two, and uh, we'll see a, good sound, uh, see a good bite in the sound start to light up. So we're gonna have to keep our eyes open for that, but um, that's a story for now um, in the hardtail world. And now as we move over into Massachusetts, the striped bass is the king right now. Um, that's the species that everyone's chasing. And it's changed quite a bit in the last week. So we still had a lot of, um, a lot of blitzing going on in the North Shore, Cape Ann, even up in Plum Island. Fish were getting a little smaller at Plum. Uh, this week, a lot of that blitzing, you know, Cape Ann and Situate has really started to subside. And uh, now it's becoming more of a hardcore surf casters game. Uh, it's, it's, and it really has been mostly surf guys, at least from what I'm hearing report wise. Uh, some kayak guys as well in the Merrimack River. Uh, most of the fish now are in that like 24 to 34 inch range, but you're, they're getting some up to 40 inches still. I talked to James Jukes. He said he was at Cuddy Hunk this week. He said he had a kind of a rough trip at Cuddy, really rough water and not a lot of fish. Um, but he kept in contact with his guys out on the island and, um, and they, they said that they were doing pretty well. Um, again, the, the fish were averaging, you know, either just under slot or just over slot or just inside the slot. Uh, but a few fish up to 40 inches and um, the bite was pretty good and it's really been uh, predominantly a nighttime thing 
That holds true throughout Cape Ann now. Um, I just think there aren't as many fish in that area uh, since that big body moved out. So the blitzes have subsided. There's not as many fish there to push the bait around, but um, if you kind of concentrate on those spots of moving water, you're still finding some decent fish. Down in Situate, where we had that like three week, uh, you know, pinch me blitz of just giant fish crushing bunker. Uh, those fish moved off. They the last at last check they had moved into Duxbury Bay, uh, but I haven't heard anything about that in a few days. So my guess is that they've kind of continued on, um, and you know hopefully they're going to find their way into the canal and we'll we'll see a good bite maybe on the uh, maybe on the October full moon. Speaking of the canal, the east end of the canal has had some really big bluefish, a lot of slot bass. There's mackerel there. There's squid there. There's peanut bunker there. And then going through the canal, uh, it's been it's been pretty good this week. It's mostly a jigging thing. Uh, guys are getting them on paddle tails. I'm sure you've heard by now, pink has been a really hot color, pink or white. Um, and that's probably due to the amount of squid in the canal, but really, if you ask me, I don't think they're looking at the color that much. I think it's more of a human thing, you know? They, they think of squid as being pink, so they use the pink color, and because everyone's using pink, everyone's catching on pink. Um, but there's been, there's been a lot of slot fish in the canal and there's been still a good number of, you know, over, over slot fish up to in, at least into the mid 30 pound class, at least, this, at least according to the guys that I talked to. Um, out on the Cape itself, there was a pretty good bite of um, sizable fish on Nauset. Um, but that, that body of fish has moved and it hasn't been, hasn't made landfall again. So it, it, it appears that they have disappeared. Um, and then the last place that we're starting to see some better action now is in Buzzards Bay. So uh, it's been, again, mostly a night thing. So I'm hearing about this mostly from surf guys. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of boat guys out fishing at night. Um, but there's, there's a pretty good body of fish moving through that area right now from, you know, say Wareham all the way out to like Dartmouth. Um, fish in the 24 inch to 20 pound range. That's kind of been the, uh, that's kind of been the slot and um pretty good numbers of them guys and it's for me it's been it's been really heavily a needlefish bite but you can get them on red fins you can get them on a lot of small to medium lures and there's tons of bait around so really the best way to find them is just to locate the bait and um, i also know that guys have been doing pretty good out around the elizabeths when the weather allows we've had some kind of uh raucous weather this week so guys haven't gotten out as much but the uh the elizabeths are holding the same class of fish you know 24 inches to 20 pounds and uh, that bite has been more of a daytime thing. Guys drifting through, throwing the dock in tight to the rocks. Uh, guys bucktailing through the holes. And, uh, you know, the bite's been decent, at least, uh, at least from what I've heard. So the other thing that's been really popular in Massachusetts right now is blackfish. And um, we're starting to see that bite spread out now. So there's, you know, guys are getting them around the vineyard. Guys are getting them all up and down the Elizabeth Islands. They got some pictures from Goose Hummock Shop. And uh, those fish were taken up on the Cape somewhere. My guess is somewhere west of the elbow, um, but uh, no definitive answers were given on that. Uh, I talked to Greg from Red Top and he said Buzzards Bay has been really good. Um, he said the one thing you wanna make sure though is that you have lots of crabs because guys are getting a lot of short fish right now, but um, you know, the ones that don't mind putting in the time are, uh, are, landing, some, are, are landing plenty of keepers among all the shorter fish. Um, and uh, you know, then you head out to Westport, you know, you look at what Jason Colby's doing and uh, he's, he's staying in shallow and he's getting a lot of really nice fish. He's, he's putting some, you know, a lot of like four to seven pound tog on the boat with a few bigger ones. And um, I mean, the guy knows what he's doing. If you're, if you're looking to get, on some, get in on some tog, some inshore stuff, give him a call. He's got an open boat a lot of the time and uh, you can get on with a bunch of other anglers or a handful of other anglers and do really well. Um, the only other thing that's happened in Massachusetts right now, uh, other than the fact that uh, the state has started stocking a lot of the Cape ponds again, so if, uh, if you want to get on some fall trout fishing, now's the time to start. But the only other thing is tuna fishing out east of the Cape. Uh, a lot of what's been going on from what I've been hearing is up on Stellwagen. You're going to want to keep an eye on NOAA because I know they shut down the giant fishery. Uh, so it's only wreck fish right now, but, um, but the fishing's been somewhere between good and really good um, and uh, that's the story right now in Massachusetts
As we move over into Rhode Island, the striper fishing has been really good this week. And you can, like I said in the intro, you can kind of put a bullseye on the South County beaches. That has been the area where the most action has been. I've been hearing about some incredible catches from the surf guys. Uh, not so much in size, but in numbers. You know, guys are getting 20, 30 fish a night when they get on the right school of fish. And it's not just at the mouth of the breachways. In fact, you know, you're never going to hit that number uh, as a single person at the mouth of the breachway just because of the uh, rotation. But, uh, you know, guys that are fishing the adjacent beaches, working the rock piles, hitting the points, uh, when they get on the right school of fish, they are finding epic bites. Uh, popular plugs have been, you know, like the bottle darter or regular darters um, in the breachways. And then on the points, too, you know, like some of the more slender darters, like a super strike. Um, guys are getting some really nice fish that way and then the other the thing that i have found is it's the needlefish bite has been phenomenal um so when i do really well with needlefish especially um you know these last couple nights i've had fish that you know i can hear them coming after the plug multiple times and you know so that might mean there's more than one fish on it but what that usually tells me is that there's squid around so i think that i think we're seeing a lot of squid inshore i actually saw one of the uh, trap boats offloading uh, the other day and they had I mean the number of squid they had was staggering so I feel like there's a lot of squid around it's not being talked about much but um, that's something to keep an eye on uh, throughout the rest of the state it's definitely better on the western end but as you head east you're still finding fish you know Narragansett Newport uh, it's just been a little bit more scattered but the uh, but the action overall I, I would call it excellent you know especially when you compare it to the last few years I would call the surf fishing in Rhode Island excellent right now now uh, for the boaters, a lot of the best fishing that's happening right now is happening up in the bay and it's it's a good thing, you know, because we're having a lot of wild weather days and a lot of wind. So, you know, when you go up into the bay, it's just like a big lake up there and uh, you can get on get in on these bites um, and, you know, not get not get the crap kicked out of you while you're out there. So um, the fish that we're seeing up there tend to top out at, at the very largest 20 pounds. But most of these fish are, say, between 24 and 35 inches. A lot of slot fish, though, and a lot of surface blitzes. So you can, you know, go out there with the binoculars, find a pot of birds, and uh, and pick away at some at some nice solid fish. A lot of guys are getting nice fish on the fly right now too. Um, and the areas that have been really good, like the southern part of the of the uh, Providence River, down to Colt State Park, and then over into Mount Hope Bay, um, guys are doing well over that way as well. And as you head further south, you're going to find you're going to find more like transient schools of fish in like the east and west passage. You, you you may go in and find them one day. You may not find them at all the next. But um, but the fish are in those areas. And uh, again, the topwater bite has been really good. Um, and then the only place I'm hearing about like outsized fish, like 35 pounds and up, is out of Block Island. Not a big surprise to anybody. And it's been all boat fish. I haven't heard of any big ones from the surf out there, but um, you know, guys throwing eels or eel-like soft plastics are still doing very well on large stripers out of block. Uh, for the bottom fishermen, Tatog is leading the way. Um, the black fishing has been really good. These fish are up shallow. Guys are getting five feet of water out to 25 feet of water, and um, the shore guys are getting in on it, doing very well. Talk to a couple friends of mine that do a lot of spear fishing. They say they've been seeing a lot of really big tog this year in you know 20 feet or less of water um, which is pretty exciting especially for shore fishermen um, or you know, I mean, really for anybody I mean you you get in tight you don't have to go too far you don't have to have a million feet of line out and be tending the current with the with the line bow you know you're fishing shallow water you're fishing water you can probably see the bottom in and um, a lot of nice fish being taken uh, and the one thing that I will say I think I said it last week, but it holds true again this week. Um, the bite has really been dominated by rigs. Guys are getting them on jigs, definitely. But um, for whatever reason, the uh, the rig bite has just been way better uh, this year. Uh, more bottom fishing that's taking place is out toward Block. The, blo the Black Sea Bass fishing has been really good, showing no, no signs of slowing down. Got codfish up, up into the teens mixing in with them. Uh, the East Grounds is a good place to go, and if you're uh, if you're interested in learning more about the East Grounds, you should check out this month's issue. Uh, we got an article about how to fish that area and where and all that stuff um, out on the East Grounds by Mike D. Alfonso. It's a great read. You should check that out. 
and um, but that bite's been really good getting better and um, it's gonna last a while so things are looking really good out there out by the windmills too and really any of the other lesser rock piles or reefs out there also holding fish uh, I'm gonna toss it over now to Mike from Watch Hill Outfitters and let's hear what he has to say about what's happening out their way hey guys Mike Wade Watch Hill Outfitters checking in for the week got a lot of Albies moving through the beach right out front Jimmy Aiello over at Bay Street Deli's picking up some nice fish he actually makes a nice casting egg that we use. Little guys right here. Uh, sometimes they're on real small stuff. So we actually put a fly on here. Real good for Albies. Check them out. We've also got some uh, small kids coming in, catching some big fish right out front. Little kid Matt uh, had a really nice bass this week, catching quite a few of them going through. We also have blackfish opening in Connecticut soon. A lot of blackfish being caught in Rhode Island waters. It's been a great beginning of the season. We've got a ton of crabs in the store. Come on in, check out some of the tog jigs we have as well. I got out on the water yesterday. A lot of fun. Saw a lot of albies. They're eating really small bait. Me, uh, my girlfriend and her daughter, we were out right there in Kwani. Tons of fish porpoising in front of us. We just could not get them to take. I was throwing small little swim shads at them, uh, but in the end we found that they were just eating a really small little bay anchovy. So definitely try to match the hatch and see if you can get into some albies. We've got a local guy that comes in, Mikey. He was out front yesterday doing some uh, fishing for blackfish and he actually ran across a pot of a bunch of little bonita, little bones, maybe six to ten inches long but just tons of them. So those little fish that are coming through definitely have some adult size Benita with them. Go check them out. They're definitely in there with the Albies. And that's the story in Rhode Island this week. And now moving over into Connecticut. Um, you know, usually I start with stripers, but this week we'll start with blackfish. The anticipation is palpable. I mean, you can feel it from miles away. Everybody is fired up to get in on this opener. And it's one of those things that I always think is kind of, I have like mixed feelings about it in Connecticut. Like, it's kind of cool that the opener is late and everybody gets fired up for it, but it's also kind of weird that like Rhode Island and uh, Massachusetts have been open for a while and, and, and just to see how good the fishing has been. But um, you know, I guess you can look at that as a harbinger for how good it's going to be in Connecticut because it should be really good. And I mean, the best thing about it is that these fish are now well established on on all these reefs, and um, you know they have they they're not pressured. So when you know you're going out in those first few days, you got a really good shot, pulling a limit and probably pulling some good fish. Uh, the downside is, you know, at least looking at it from a crowd standpoint, is that the opener's on a Sunday this month. I mean, this year. So it's going to be, you know, you can pretty much double the number of boats you would see out there if it was a Tuesday. Um, and so that might mean, for, you know, for me, it would mean that I'm going to, I'm going to take out the chart tonight and I'm going to look for spots that, you know, that don't have a name or spots that, that have names that you don't hear too often. And that's where I'm going to concentrate instead of going to the really popular spots, the Southwest Reef, Six Mile Reef, Goshen, uh, Sarah's Ledge, th places like that that you hear about all the time, probably going to be covered up with boats and anchors. Um, but if you kind of, you know, if you if you're willing to strike out on your own, you're probably going to be alone, and you're probably going to have your pick of the fish, uh, and that's that's the way I would play it. But this this beginning of the season every year in Connecticut is a, just a great time to get out there and find, you know, not only you know get those first black fish of the fall, but get maybe your biggest one of the fall. So, uh, and the other thing too, you know, a lot of the shops are taking crab orders now. You might want to call today and order your crabs because. It can get pretty hectic, especially on that first opening morning. Uh, you know, there might be a line out the door. I mean, it might be a Black Friday, yeah, Black Friday situation. So, uh, yeah, make your preparations now. Uh, Striper-wise, the, the epicenter still seems to be the Connecticut River. There are some nice fish being taken in the race as well, but that area around the Connecticut River continues to produce nice fish. Continues to produce good numbers of smaller fish. You know, slot fish and below. A lot of bait in that area and um, you know it, it's it's definitely an area if I had to catch a striper it would be one of the one of the places that I would make a beeline for 
Uh, but at the same time, now we're starting to hear about a lot more fish out in the Western Sound. So around the Norwalk Islands, a, to a topwater bite has been firing up uh, for about a week now. Guys are getting them, you know, um, all day long, but your best time is definitely going to be morning. Second best time is going to be evening. And then after that, it's just when you can get out there. If you get out there on a gloomy day, a little bit of wind, some white water in tight, uh, you got a good shot at getting them uh, any time of day. And these fish are mixed sizes, mostly under 20 pounds. Um, guys are getting them on all kinds of different top water plugs, jumping minnows, the seven inch dock, um, high pitch walk from Shimano, um, anything like that. It's, it's really been dominated by uh, walk the dog style plugs, but I guarantee you, if you go out there and throw a little one ounce super strike popper or uh, one of the hoagie charter grade poppers, you're gonna hook up too. Uh, a lot of bait in that area, a lot of, um, a lot of peanut bunker, a lot of silver sides, and um, you know, the bite's been really good. It's been some bluefish mixing in, mostly on the smaller side, you know, smoker size blues, as I like to call them. The bigger bluefish have been out, um, and you're going to hear more about that from Max in his report. But, you know, middle ground 28C, historically always producing some big bluefish. Another place that's been producing a lot of good bluefish, Six Mile and Southwest Reef. Um, and if you don't have a way to get out there, you might want to give TJ from Rock and Roll Charters a call. I know he's been crushing the bluefish and doing pretty well with scup, sea bass, and stripers as well. So um, you might want to take a look at that. And let's see, what am I missing? So the scup bite continues to be pretty good. It's slowing down a little bit. The fish are starting to move out a little bit deeper, but uh, overall, it's still a great fishery. You, you know, you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna put a limit in the boat if you, if you put your time into those. Uh, sea bass, I would classify that in the same category. It's slowed down a little bit, but the further east you go, the better your chances get. And, you know, I would start fishing around 30 feet of water and, and push out to 70, 80 or, or further if, if it takes that. And just concentrate on those ledges, wrecks, structure. And, uh, you know, the bite's still been very good. And um, if you put your time in, you, you should have no trouble uh, putting together enough for a, uh, for a meal or two. And now we're going to throw it over to Max from Fisherman's World and hear what's happening out in their neck of the woods. Hey everyone, Max here from Fisherman's World with another local fishing report. The diamond jigging bite at 28C has been red hot with bluefish. There's been fish all the way from 5 up to 15, 16 pounds taken. Most people are diamond jigging the northeast end of it on the outgoing. The incoming is a little slower, but they are still there. Also at 11B, the outgoing diamond jig bite is picking up too. It's a lot of blues, but we should see bass start mixing in with these fish. Up and tight around the islands, but there's a lot of bass action, guys throwing spooks, live bait, bucktail, swimmers, you name it. The early morning action has been the best and the sunset. We should just see this steadily go out throughout the day with blitzing as we progress with colder nights and our water temps start to drop and the fish start to migrate. We are anticipating a good blackfish opener, so we're going to be stocked up on crabs. Usually this time of year, the fish are all up in shallow, so we'll have plenty of crabs come the opener. The Alba report has been strong this past week. Guys fishing around the islands, on the backsides, places like 28C, and then guys shooting across Smithtown Bay, Crane's Neck, Mount Sinai, Middle Ground, and then on our side, Penfield Reef, and off Sunken Island. Thanks and good luck. And that's what I've got for you guys this week in Connecticut. I hope these reports have helped you guys out. Um, the fishing has been really good. You know, we're like dead center in the fall run right now. Things are popping off pretty good. Uh, whether you fish from the surf, whether you fish from a boat, whether you like stripers, bluefish, blackfish, it's all going on right now. And, um, you know, it's a great time to be on the water in New England. If, um, if you're just checking out the videos on YouTube, give us a subscribe, give us a like, hit that little bell thing down there so we can give you a notification when we post new content. And if you haven't checked out the magazine, pick us up at the newsstand, check us out. We've got a great issue out there right now. Uh, covering a lot of things from albies to codfish to striped bass and everything in between and um you know head over to the website too and you know see what we've got we've got reports that cover the entire northern half of the east coast from delaware up to maine we've got content that covers all that as well we've got some of the best writers in the business uh putting out stories to to make you better fishermen and uh, i think you're going to find what you like over there and um and that's it. I hope you guys have a great week this week, and we'll see you guys next week. Thanks a lot. Steigercraft Boats, built by people who fish our waters. 
Serious English Chew Steiger Craft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit SteigerCraft.com for a dealer near you.